In the last 30 years, I calculate that I have taken in 40,000 cats. Ever since I can remember, I've always had a love and an affinity for cats. My name is Linnea and I live with 1,000 cats. You've heard of a crazy cat lady before, but Linnea takes it to another level. Her hobby became a large-scale operation called the Cat House on the Kings, which has over 40 full-time employees. But our, basically our mission is to provide a home that's a no-cage, no-kill facility, rescue center, adoption center. So we can't, we can't take in the 200,000 on the streets, but we take in close to 2,000 off the streets every year. We have basically five different areas. We have uh, maintenance because it is 12 acres. There's a lot of equipment and a lot of land and a lot of trees and a lot of grass. We have uh, vet techs and I think six vet assistants. Two ICUs, we have a hospital. We have a very large kitten quarantine building. The seniors have their own quarantine area and we have an, a leukemia setup and we have an FIV setup, which are totally separate from the other cats. The goal is to allow a cat to be a cat, which is, means if it wants to run full speed and climb a tree, there's a tree there for it to climb. While Linnea didn't start her business until 1992, the genesis for her passion project started decades earlier. And every year I would ask my mom for a kitten. Anytime I would ask, I want a kitten. When I was about four or five, a stray kitten came to the house and I thought I could keep it. But the family went on a vacation that we very rarely did because five kids and a principal for a father, you don't have a lot of money to spend. And I had my neighbor watch this kitten for me and her father ran over it and killed it. So I think I cried for about three years about over that. And that was the only kitten I had until I was in high school. When I moved out here, my father had two mink cats that died of old age, and he asked me to find him a new one, a replacement. And so it was March, and I had no idea that there was a kitten season. And so I went from shelter to shelter to shelter looking for kittens, and I ended up at Sanger Humane, which is just a little bit north of here. They didn't have any kittens, but they had the, the bottle feeds that came in. People would take them away from the mother and take them into the shelter to be killed. And so I, they asked me, well, can you feed these? And I took in three, and then I took in five more, and I you know, kept taking. They kept calling me like every day, can you take in, until I had 15. And they all got sick, and I would take a little, a box of pathetic kittens from vet to vet to vet, trying to get help for them. By then, I had a bedroom that was just totally inundated with animals. Uh, there was like three dogs and 30 cats. Uh, on my bed at night and there was they left a three foot square for me to sleep and I had a dog door. Did you think that I would just close the dog door? No, because the dogs might want to go out at night. So I suffered through it and I have scratches on my face from them running across my face in the middle of the night. They threw up in my ear from up above. That was when I decided, you know, it's been nice, but I can't live here anymore. You know, here I have this 4,200 square foot, five bedroom home view of the river and all the rest of the things around it. And I ended up in a, a trailer with a view of a rusty metal shed. While living with a thousand cats may seem strange, Linnea does it for a fantastic cause and that's what matters most. I would like a no-kill nation. That's our, the goal of all rescues. If every cat were taken care of, if every cat were spayed and neutered, we wouldn't need sanctuaries. We can't warehouse cats. The only thing we can do as a civilized nation is to do the right thing and that spay and neuter them and not allow them to breed and then be killed. We are a third world country when it comes to how we treat our domestic pets. More than anything, I would like to see that end. I'm Drew Binsky and thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe down there if you want to see more inspiring people stories and check out my main channel below where I bring you on the most epic adventures from every country. Also, I'm giving away for free all of my best travel tips and secrets for finding cheap flights on that middle link. Until next time, stay safe, be spontaneous, and just go.